Hey guys, welcome to episode five of Ask Jungle Scout. I hope you all have enjoyed these episodes so far. Let us know in the comments, are we answering enough questions? You know, we're starting to get quite a few now, um, so thank you for that. But we could potentially um, do two episodes a week if you want, so make sure to let us know. One other quick thing before we get into the questions, if you weren't aware, we've just started a brand new case study. It's called the Million Dollar Case Study. A couple of years ago, um, Greg did a collaborative product launch of bamboo marshmallow sticks, where we shared the whole process of finding a new private label product right up until selling it and everything in between. We know that the Amazon landscape has changed, so in 2017, we're now launching this new case study where we're gonna keep going and launch new products, do whatever it takes to reach the million dollar mark. All the proceeds are going to charity and we're gonna share every single step along the way. So I'll put a link to the webinars down below. It's totally free. You get to see exactly how we reach the million dollar mark. So definitely check that one out if you haven't already. So question one is from Dane and he asks, I found what I think is a decent product. The quality of the listings in the top 10 are poor and I believe I can definitely create a better listing. Two of the top 10 listings have over two or 300 reviews whilst the others all have under 50, well under 50. Do these two listings with massive reviews just blow my product idea out of the water? Cool, thanks for the question, Dane. So in this case, that's a pretty good situation. If you can find eight out of the, the top 10 listings with under 50 reviews, that's a pretty good competition level. It's fairly low. Um, yes, the two or 300 reviews, those top two listings are fairly high, but the question you need to ask here is what is the depth of the market? So what I mean by that is how are the sales spread out amongst the top 10 listings? If all or the majority of the sales are all going to those top two listings with two or 300 reviews, then that is a problem if the rest of them, the other eight, aren't get, getting many sales. However, if you see that the, um, the reviews are averaged out fairly evenly amongst that top 10, then it mightn't be such a problem that you've got those two listings with a lot of reviews. Why? Because in the first scenario where only the top two listings are getting the majority of sales, that means that for you to get um, a percentage of those sales, you would need to get your listing up into the, the first or second rank under that keyword. This is doable, but it's a lot harder. It's, you know, it can be quite challenging just getting your product or getting your listing into the first page of Amazon, let alone into the first or second listing. So what we recommend is to try to find products that have the sales spread out amongst the top 10. If that's the case in your scenario, then I'd say it's potentially a good product to go with. Question two is from Nick and he says, I really enjoyed the second episode of the Million Dollar Case Study today. I had a question about your use of Jungle Scout and a decision you made. When you were looking at Himalayan salt lamps, your search found that there were four sellers who were doing very well and the rest were not. On the call, I think you said that this was a concern and you would need to look into it further. What did your gut instinct tell you? With this concentration of sellers, would this mean that perhaps these four sellers are spending a lot on PPC? Cool, great question, Nick. And it's sort of a, a good segue from the previous one as the answer is very similar. I can't speak on behalf of Greg, but this is what I believe he was referring to. If the top four sellers are getting the majority of the sales, it makes it a lot harder to break into that niche. It could be because they're using a lot more PPC, but regardless of how they're doing it, it just makes it harder for you because you would have to match that level, whether it be doing lots of promotions, doing lots of PPC. It's not to say it's impossible to get um, and to, to compete with those top four sellers. It just means it's a lot harder and we're trying to find opportunities that are a bit easier to break into. Just quickly, did that answer help you out? Let us know by giving us a thumbs up. The next question is from Nika who says, I'm in the research phase, found a product that I like, talked to suppliers, got samples, but before I was able to place an order, I noticed a lot of new sellers entered the market. The number doubled with new sellers. In a case like that, should I give up or continue with the launch? Okay, that's a really interesting question, Nika. I can't speak for you in terms of whether or not you should continue with the launch, but I'll let you know what I would do in this situation. And I think it's a bit of a callback to uh, a question that Greg was answering last week 
about being a bit more aggressive or bullish with your product launch. In this situation, I would look at the quality of these other sellers. You know, are their listings any good? What are they offering? Also, what are you offering? Have you got something unique about your listing that no one else has? Uh, you know, have you bundled it with something or made some you know, slight modifications to it to add more value? I would look at that first and kind of assess whether or not um, you've got something different about your product. If so, I would then go ahead and try to outrun and beat the other new sellers that have just entered the game. There are many sellers who launch a product on Amazon but they're not prepared to spend enough on their marketing budget, whether it be promotions or PPC at the start, in order to get that sales velocity going, which helps you rank which helps get you those first reviews and really gets you into the game at the start. And so they're sort of stuck at this sort of point where they've got no reviews, they're not getting any sales and they're not really uh, willing to spend any money to move ahead. That's where if you're a bit more aggressive at the start with your promotions and your PPC, you can still you know, outbeat uh, a lot of uh, new sellers that are coming on board. So I would say it's still worth looking at whether to compete with the others. I wouldn't rule it out entirely. So I can't say for sure whether or not you should give up on this product launch or not. I would go through those tests that I just mentioned and then assess and go from there. Our final question is from Stephen who says, I am UK based, so I was thinking about launching a private label product on Amazon UK, but you say reduce the numbers to 1,000 per month sold in the top 10 sellers but won't this dramatically reduce profit? I'm struggling at the moment because my instincts tell me that it is less hassle to sell on a UK platform as I live here and potentially can have inventory shipped to me first for inspection or part storage and then sent on to FBA. My problem is in the US it seems more complicated, plus I'm sure that there must be a good market here in the UK, so I'm feeling a little bit confused. So this is following on from a question last week where we were looking at the difference in the demand between the US and all the other Amazon markets. Because the fact of the matter is, is that outside of the US, the rest of the markets have a lot less demand. There's a lot less sales on those Amazon markets. And so that is why um, Greg was saying that in the UK, you might be better off looking for between 1,000 to 1,500 sales in the top 10 listings as opposed to the 3,000 that we recommend in the US. So yes, this will mean less profit because it is a smaller marketplace. So what you've gotta do is assess each product uh, on a case-by-case -case scenario. So you need to look at one product and look at how competitive it is because there's, there's two things that you're looking for. Well, there's more than two, but two of the main things you're looking for is the sales volume or the demand and also the competition. So you want high sales, low competition. So if you look at that particular niche or that product in the US, you might have high sales, but you might also have high competition. In the UK, you might have less sales, but perhaps the difference between the sales and the competition is greater. So potentially it might be a better opportunity for you in the UK. Even though you won't get as much profit, there's less competition. So you could potentially get a, a higher percentage or market share of that particular product or niche. You do bring up a good point of the fact that in the UK you could get it shipped to you where you can assess the inventory first before shipping to Amazon. So that is a bit of a downside if you're selling in the US. It's you know potentially not uh, economical to do that, to send it to the UK and then to the US. So that is one thing that you will have to uh, weigh up how much you, you wanna be able to do that. Uh, I know there are a lot of sellers that are foreign sellers outside of the US that just send direct to the US. Um, I can't say which one is better. Obviously, if you have the chance to inspect the product yourself, it's definitely better. Um, however, there are a lot of people that don't do that as well. So that's what it comes down to is that you can look at the UK and these other markets as opportunities because there might be less competition and there might be less sellers in those marketplaces. So that's why sellers would look into these other marketplaces. If you're just looking for the most sales volume, then the US wins hands down. But looking into these other marketplaces, you might find some niches with less competition, which is why they're unique. 
So that's all the questions for today. I hope you found some value in some of the answers. If you'd like your question answered, make sure you drop it in the comments below. Also, I've put in a link for the million dollar case study. We're gonna be sharing everything about our brand new product launch. We're totally excited about it, so make sure you check that one out. Thanks for watching today, guys. Make sure to subscribe for the next episode. We'll see you then.